Hey Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Winter is upon us, and with it a beautiful collection of bright stars in the sky during the chilly nights. Added to it this winter is an assortment of planets and some close pairings with the moon that make it more worthwhile than ever to bundle up, head outside, and look up at what the night sky has to offer even from city skies. The centerpiece of the winter sky is undoubtedly the constellation of Orion the Hunter. At the start of the year, Orion is rising in the east as the sky darkens. He'll be up all night, is easy to recognize, and bright enough to be seen even from very light-polluted skies. From darker skies, you'll see the full extent of stars in this constellation, a very rich part of the sky. And you might even have trouble picking out the brightest stars, with all the dimmer ones crowding the view. The most recognizable part of Orion is his belt of three stars. This pattern in the sky is eye-catching from any sky, and a very valuable tool to navigate the winter stars. Diagonal across it are two supergiant stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel. Betelgeuse, one of Orion's shoulders, is a red supergiant star, shining with a reddish-orange color. Rigel, one of Orion's knees, is a blue supergiant, very hot, and it has a distinctive bluish tint. Just below the belt is another small group of three stars, known as the Sword of Orion. The middle star of the sword looks a little fuzzy, and in fact is the Great Orion Nebula, a beautiful star-forming region. With binoculars or a telescope, you can begin to see a lot more detail in the region. And with long-exposure astrophotography, the incredible extent of dust and gas in this stellar nursery becomes apparent. In fact, the entire constellation of Orion is full of scenic areas of the sky, including the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae near one of the stars of the belt. We can use the belt of Orion to help navigate the winter sky. If we follow the line of those three stars to the right, we see this V-shape of stars in the sky, the face of Taurus the Bull. The bright star Aldebaran, with a reddish-orange tint, marks the eye of Taurus, and you can extend the V-shape further to form the horns of the bull. Also included in this constellation is a beautiful cluster of stars known as the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. This cluster contains over a thousand stars, but with the naked eye, there are usually six or seven to be seen, and occasionally more with a very dark sky and sharp eyesight. Binoculars give a terrific view, and telescopes can begin to pick up some of the nebulosity here, dust and gas which these stars are passing through. The dust and the gas is illuminated by the light of these stars, giving the whole scene a bluish, wintry tinge. Hanging out in this part of the sky this winter is the red planet Mars. Planets are constantly moving around the Sun, and this motion combined with the Earth's motion makes the planets appear to wander amongst the stars over the course of weeks and months. But through about Valentine's Day, you'll see bright Mars making an interesting appearance near similarly bright and similarly reddish Betelgeuse and Aldebaran. Mars is past its closest for the year, which occurred in early December, but it still affords a good view through a nice backyard telescope, although it never gets as big in the eyepiece as Jupiter or Saturn, despite being much closer to Earth. Let's go back to the belt of Orion, and this time point the other way, and we'll easily spot the bright star Sirius, in fact, the brightest star in the nighttime sky. It's part of the constellation of Canis Major, the big dog. And if there's a big dog, you probably expect there to be a little dog as well, and there is. To the left of Orion and above Sirius, here's the bright star Procyon, part of the little dog. An easy-to-spot asterism or pattern of stars in the winter sky is known as the Winter Triangle, which includes Procyon, the bright star Sirius, and the fiery shoulder of Orion, Betelgeuse. Look for this bright equilateral triangle to the left of Orion's belt. Back to Orion and aiming higher in the sky, if you point from Rigel through Betelgeuse, you'll come to a well-known zodiac constellation, the Gemini Twins. Marked by two twin stars, Pollux and Castor, and the rest of the constellation resembles two stick figures side by side in the sky. And rounding out this wintry grouping is the bright star Capella, which marks Orija the charioteer. Even in light polluted skies, Capella shines through, and you should have no issue spotting it as it goes almost directly overhead from mid northern latitudes. These constellations are consistent from one winter to the next, but in the case of planets like Mars, they can be very inconsistent. 
changing their position from season to season and definitely from year to year. Early this winter, though, you have a great chance to catch all five naked eye planets in the sky. Mars is very easy, high up in the sky as the sky darkens. Jupiter, too, which is about due south and halfway up in the sky as evening begins. To the lower right of Jupiter is Saturn, much dimmer, but still quite visible in the twilight. And you'll have to time it just right to catch Mercury and Venus. They'll be low in the west-southwest after sunset. Mercury is at its easiest to spot in the last week of December. And on Christmas Eve, you can see a beautiful trio of Venus, Mercury, and the thin crescent moon. On Christmas night, the moon will have moved more towards Saturn, giving a beautiful string of planets and the moon in the southwest. Mercury gets lower every night, and it swaps places in the sky with Venus by New Year's Day. While Venus is climbing higher and higher, beginning its amazing evening appearance for 2023. So the winter sky has many treasures to see, and it's worth a little chill to step outside for a time and look up at what the night sky has to offer. That's all we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing, and we'll see you next time.